Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 18 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorial. In this video, we will talk about routing in ASP.NET Core MVC and we will create them practically. This is continuation to part 17, controllers in ASP.NET Core MVC. So please watch it before proceeding to this one. I shared the link in the description. Routing in ASP.NET Core MVC is a mechanism through which incoming requests are mapped to controllers and their actions. So we have two types of routing in ASP.NET Core MVC. The first one is conventional and the second one is attribute routing. So let's talk about conventional routing first. So conventional routing is used with controllers and views. And this is the flow that we had discussed in part 13 of this video series. All right. So when user tries to access our application with any URL, we need to prepare our middleware to provide correct data, files or pages. So we need to write the logic in our middleware if the request came with a certain URL, like where we need to route it to. And to implement this, Microsoft already provided very simple extension methods, or we can say middleware. So it is a three-step process to implement conventional routing. And the step one is add use endpoints middleware and define the routes. Step two, add use routing middleware before use endpoints middleware to select which route to execute. And the last one is add required services which supports use endpoints and configure services method which means inject routing dependencies. So there are many services that supports routing, like add controllers with views, add MVC, add MVC core, etc. Eventually what all these services actually doing that we will discuss maybe in some other video. For now, just think of them as a methods provided by Microsoft to make our routes work. All right. So let's go to Visual Studio and this is the project which we are working with. In our last video, we have created one action method which is just returning a simple string. So let's implement conventional routing so that our application can process this request. For that, let's get back to startup.cs class and the first step is add use endpoint middleware. So let's type app.use endpoints bracket open. And if you go to its definition, you can see it is present under endpoint routing application builders extension class. And you can see in the parameter, it is expecting i application builder and action of i endpoint route builder. So this is an extension method and endpoint middleware will execute the endpoints associated with the current request. Let's get back to our middleware method and let's define a variable endpoints. Uh, you can name it anything. Here we are dealing with endpoints, so we are naming it in that way. All right, such that open the curly braces and close the method for better readability in advance. If you write endpoints, then you can see it is offering many methods to perform various tasks around routing. Let's use map controller routes, close statement with a semicolon. So the first parameter is name. So you can give any meaningful name which you feel is suitable for your route as we are targeting the employee index action method which we will be using to display list of employees. So let me name it employee list. Next will be pattern of your URL. Let's say when my user navigate to list of employee like um, www.proconcepts.com slash list of employee, then I want this route to be executed. So my pattern will be list of employee. Next is which controller and action method it should go. So when the request came, where it should go. Because if you remember in MVC pattern, it's the controller which will process your request. So write defaults colon calibrace is open so my controller will be employee so write controller is equal to employee and action will be equal to 
index. And that's it. Our first route is ready. Let's run our application. Here you can see the error. So let me read the error first. So endpoint routing middleware matches endpoints set up by endpoint middleware and so must be added to the request execution pipeline before endpoint middleware. Please add routing middleware by calling iApplicationBuilder.use routing inside the call to configure in the application startup code. So it's simply because we skipped this step two, which is to apply use routing middleware before use endpoints. So let's correct this error. And let's run the program once again to get new exception. Can you guess what will be the exception? So if your guess is we haven't implemented this step three to add required services within configure services method, then you are absolutely correct. Let's see the exception message. So unable to find the required services, please add all the required services by calling iServiceCollection.add controllers inside the call to configure services in the application startup code. So let's fix this error by adding services.add controllers with views within configure services methods. And now let's run the program. Now we will get the clean run. Let me navigate to slash list of employees. You can see we are getting the required message, which is pro controller. Okay. So let's get back to Visual Studio. And let me change this message to list of employees. Now, obviously, in real time, any application will have more than one controller and action method. So let's create another action method. So just copy and paste. And let's name it delete employee, which is expecting ID of type integer. And let's change the written message and type controller is equal to employee and action is equal to delete employee. Now, for this, we need to create another route, right? So within our middleware, let's copy and paste the existing route and let's name it delete employee. And let's say the pattern will be delete employee. And because we are expecting ID as an input parameter, let's add slash ID with curly braces. All right. Next is we need to target employee controller and delete employee action. So let's change the action method. Now our second conventional route is also ready. It will target the delete employee action method. So let's run the program. Let's navigate to delete employee slash one. You can see the proper message is printed. And what if I don't pass ID? Then you can see it will throw page not found exception. Oh, so we have a terminator middleware at the end. That's why our middleware gets something to process this request. Let's delete that middleware and run the program once again. And let's navigate to delete employee. And now you can see the page not found exception. So to fix this, we only need to append question mark to make it optional. So let's append after ID and let's run the program once again. And now if you navigate to delete employee, you will see the output is as expected because we make the ID optional. But the question is we only create one controller and two action methods. And to process them, we need to write two different routes. In the real-time application, there might be hundreds to thousands of action methods will be there. Do we need to create routes for each of them? And the answer is, if you are ready to have generic URLs and your SEO team agrees with some common pattern, 
SEO here means search engine optimization and in real time application, ranking of Google, Bing or any other search engine plays a very vital role. And SEO team are really choosy about these URLs. So if you're okay, then you can use the default routes. It is extremely simple to implement default routes. Let's see that. So just copy and paste the pattern. Let's name it default. Delete default controller and action. Within pattern, let's type controller within curly braces slash action within curly braces and then ID with quotient mark to make it optional within curly braces. And that's it. Any request with correct controller and action name will route it to the correct path. Let's see that. Let's run the program. And let's change the URL to employ slash index, which is our controller and action method. And you can see the output is as expected. Next, change it to employ slash delete employ. And again, correct routing. And if I route it to list of employ, then this URL also routes it to the index action method of employee controller. And if I route it to the root URL, then it displays the page not found error. So whenever end user lands to your website, they generally came to your root path. For example, www.google.com or youtube.com, anything. So we need to handle that request as well. So let's get back to Visual Studio. So to provide default controller an action, only thing which we need to do is to give the controller an action name. So let's give controller as employee and action as index. So this is what I want whenever end user visits our website. We want them to display list of employee. All right. So let's run the program once again. And now you can see we are getting the proper message. So this is our conventional routing. It's called conventional routing because it established a convention for URL path. The first path segment controller is equal to employee maps to the controller name. The second path segment action is equal to index maps to the action name. And the third segment ID question mark within curly braces is used for optional ID. The question in ID uh, question mark makes it optional. ID is used to map to the model entity. As you can see, we have added multiple routes here. So we call them multiple conventional route. Using conventional routing with the default routes allows creating the app without having to come up with new URL pattern for each action. Microsoft makes it really simple to route as per our convenience. All right then, if you have any queries related to the content of this video, do ask me in comments. Till then, thanks for watching.